So this is going to be a series about the suspension geometry of the Mark 7 platform. I don't think I've seen anybody actually do anything like this in depth yet, so this some of this might be a little bit of a surprise to people, but I've got three primary topics that I plan on covering and things that I did while I had the suspension apart for some upgrades this winter. Um, I've got three weeks to go before my first event of the year. Um, so some of those things that I did to the car, I replaced the subframe with an aluminum one, an Audi aluminum subframe out of a 22 Audi S3. Um, I've got lowering springs, 034 lowering springs, and I put the 034 lower ball joints back on the car. You may recall I had an issue with them at stock ride height if you've been on the website. Um, and lastly, I replaced the uh, some torn BFI bushings that they tore after about one year, just replaced them with the same thing again. And the PowerFlex offset lower control arm bushings were all torn as well after, I think it was like 10 days on track with those. So Super Pro bushings went in up front. They're non-offset. Um, the goal is to add camber to the car. So the 034 lower ball joints and lowering the car should add a little bit of camber. Which is what it car, which is what the car really needs to go faster. Um, those three things that I looked really heavily in depth at while the car was apart was one, ride height and shock travel, wheel travel. Um, you know, what are we have some questions? If you lower the car an inch, you know, how much bump travel do you still have? If you don't lower the car an inch, you know, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have to start with? Um, anyone who wants to modify their car to go faster, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not baselining it in stock form first. Um, that's something I've learned after spending lots and lots of money on other platforms. So this car is pretty much all the lessons I've gone through learning and looking at everything and questioning everything. So anyways, moving on, the other topic I wanted to cover is the camber curve. I went ahead and measured out the camber curve with the stock ball joints and with the 034 roll center correcting ball joints all the way from full bump to full droop. So we can see exactly how much camber you gain throughout the amount of travel. And then lastly, it was a little bit of a controversial uh, article about the, uh, the RCO ball joints at ride height. Um, I will leave a link below just so you can kind of get caught up on the issue. But essentially, the car had so much bump steer and you could visibly see the tires towing out on compression and towing in on droop uh, when I drove the car at Fast of Us. The, I'll leave a link to the video of that as well or post it somewhere up there, whatever. Um, but it was really terrible. Um, and I'm going to show you why that is not a ride height thing, but that is a suspension geometry thing. These cars do not have a way to correct bump steer easily. You have to either lower the tie rod end when you install those ball joints, or you have to raise the steering rack, uh, the inner tie rod end, essentially. Um, neither of those is really an option on this platform. Verkline does make a two millimeter drop potential solution for the tie rod, but that's not anywhere near enough to correct all of the bump steer out of the RCO ball joints. That said, I understand a lot of people have them and like them and love them. They add camber. Camber is one of the best ways to make a car go faster around a road course, regardless of everything else setup wise. If you don't have enough camber, it's probably still going to suck. So you know, I'm going to be, I have all the parts that are all installed on the car. I'm going to be giving it a fair shake again. So we're going to see how they are in reality. And as long as there's no funny tire wear or any really weird behavior, you know, I might just continue to roll with them. But I think that it'd be a disservice to not fully understand all of the implications of modifications being done to a car. Um, we will have a little bit of a summary about how those three topics, the bump steer, camber curve, and ride height all relate to each other, um, and how you might uh, change the way you build your car based on whatever compromises you're willing to make or not willing to make. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll do a follow-up testing with, you know, how the car actually feels and everything once that happens in three weeks. But uh, 
Yeah, I'll be at VIR in three weeks in February for the Tidewater Sports Car Club HPE. I think it's the Oak Tree Bowl 3 or 4, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll leave a link to the description in the description as well. So hopefully you enjoy the series. There might be some more to add to it eventually, but that's the gist of it for the time being.